Dear friends, for the month of June, the month of the most sacred heart of Jesus, let us reflect on God's love for us and our love for God with the doctor of divine love himself, St. Francis de Sales. Chapter 18 Of Temptations of Blasphemy and Infidelity You cannot and you ought not to believe that the temptations of blasphemy and infidelity come from God. And who has ever told you that God is the author of them? He may, I grant you, send spiritual darkness. He may send the feeling of dereliction and loss of vigor. He may send that bitterness of spiritual palate which makes the sweetest wine of the world turn bitter. But temptations of blasphemy, of infidelity, oh, never. They cannot come from our good God. His bosom is too pure to entertain objects such as those. Know you how God acts with regards to such things? He permits the malignant craftsman who makes them to come and offer us those wares of his for sale, that by scorning them we may be able to prove our affection for divine things. And ought we to disquiet ourselves for that? Ought we to turn aside for an instant? O oh God, in no wise ought we to do so. It is the devil who is ever busying himself about our soul to see if anywhere he can find a gate open. Thus he did with Jacob, with St. Anthony, with St. Catherine of Siena, and with an infinite number of holy souls whom I know, and with my own, which is worth nothing, and which I know not. But what? Ought we to vex ourselves for this? Keep all the avenues closely barred, and let him be frozen. He will be tired out at last, or if not, God will make him raise the siege. Remember what I believe I said to you once before. It is a good sign that he raises such a tumult and tempest round your will. It is a sign that he is not within it. Courage then, whilst we can say with resolution, though without feeling, Live Jesus, we need not fear. And do not tell me that you say it with cowardice, without force or courage, but as if by a kind of violence you do yourself. O oh God, behold therein that holy violence which bears away the kingdom of heaven. It is a sign that the enemy has indeed gained all else in our fortress except the impregnable, the invincible citadel, which cannot be lost except by itself. It is in fine that free will, which all open to the eyes of God resides in the supreme and most spiritual part of the soul and which depends upon none other save its God and itself. And when all the other faculties of the soul are troubled by the enemy, this alone remains, having control over itself so as not to give consent unless it pleases. Yet we see soul foolishly afflicted, because the enemy, occupying all the other faculties, makes therein a loud hurly-burly and confusion. They can scarcely hear what is said and done in the superior will, which indeed has a voice much clearer and much distinct than that of the inferior will. But the voice of the latter is so rough and dissonant that it drowns the clear sounds of the former. Lastly, observe this. Whilst the temptation is displeasing to you, there is nothing to fear. For why does it displease you but because you do not will it? For the rest, those vexatious temptations come from the malice of the devil. But the pain and suffering which we feel from them comes from the mercy of God, who, contrary to the will of his enemy, draws from his malice that holy tribulation whereby he refines the gold which he destines for his treasure house. I say, therefore, your temptations come from the devil and from hell, but your pains and afflictions come from God and from paradise. The mothers are of Babylon, but the children are of Jerusalem. Despise the temptations, embrace the tribulations. Always remember, be who you are and be that well. May God bless you.